Our uh, first maker today that I'd like to present is Tim Hunkin. Uh, before the presentation, we're trying to uh, decide what Tim Hunkin's uh, title or relationship here at the Exploratorium was, and we decided he's sort of tinker, tinkerer in residence. Um, and uh, he's been at Maker Fair. He uh, is a cartoonist and an engineer, art, an artist and an engineer is always a, a great uh, combination to me in terms of what what sort of amazing things uh, are created, and I think Tim is a great example of that confluence. Um, he's also was involved in the uh, Secret Life of Machines series, which is really amazing, especially the kids here today. If you haven't seen that series, it's available on the internet. If you just go and search on Secret Life of Machines on Google, I'm sure you'll find it, and Tim can give you more information about how to access that. But anyway, uh, Tim Hunkin. <laughs> I've only got seven minutes, so um, I thought the quickest way to introduce you to what I make is um, this trailer that I put together last year for um, a DVD. Um, is that going to work? Yes, here we go. Um, so this is... I run an amusement arcade in Suffolk. This is a machine called Fly Drive, where you see how you'd fare with a fly eating people's food. Um, this is a collecting box for a hospital in London, where you uh, try and bet which uh, lift is going to turn up. Um, this is a steam-powered clock, also in London. It doesn't run anymore, but it still stands in Chelsea. Another arcade machine, a mad dog. You have to put your hand in the cage. This is a, a collecting box for an anthropology museum in Oxford, and these are some anthropologists that look accusingly at you. Um, this is a water powered clock. This is another arcade game called Mobility Masterclass, where you train for your future. You have to cross um, a freeway with a walker. Um, this is a clock at London Zoo, I made a couple of few years ago. Hmm. Another arcade machine, Auto Frisk. Another collecting box, this is uh, in another hospital in London. Uh, where you feed, it feeds the patients coins while the nurse uh, feeds the patients information. This is where I got my arcade on Southall Pier. This is a solar powered sign. Another arcade machine. This is a different sort of arcade. It's a shooting gallery where you shoot. The top 10 ranking. Um, this is fairly obvious. This is just a bag searching machine. Another simulator ride, this one's called Microbreak. It's a package holiday in two and a half minutes. And this is a clock, another clock, a gravity escapement clock, a very beautiful Victorian escapement. Um, this is my version of it. <clears throat> another simulator ride, this is called Rent a Dog, uh, where you uh, take this dog for a walk. The last one, this is the, just the dancing record player. Um, so I, again, I apologise. Not, I'm not trying to flog you the DVD. It's just the quickest way of introducing myself. Um, <clears throat> well, today is about tools. Um, so uh, I wanted, I thought it appropriate to show you my workshop. Um, so it's all, in a workshop, it's always important to have space for your stuff. So there's a lot of, you can see the racks with all my bits of steel and plates on the other side. And then there's a door through to another room, which, has got, which is just absolutely full of stuff. So stuff is important as, as well as the tools. Um, now, I think if I could do this, I can scroll round. Now, doors are important. I have doors on uh, both sides, or three doors actually, 
because so that I can always get a draft going through my workshop. So I don't need to have any fancy fume extraction. God does it for me. So um, that's a very good point. The, uh, the table is a useful thing, to have a table in the middle. Uh, I think one that's not too large, so you can, get, get, you can get all round it. Mine's about three foot by four foot six. And it's a big, big lump of steel, which is flat, so it's a good surface to weld on. And then I can put that bit of chipboard on top um, so that I can drill into it and uh, spray on it and, and other things. Um, there's a solid vice there. I always think it's good to have a very solid vice a big vice solidly mounted, so you can really thrash things and pull things straight and attack things if they've gone wrong particularly. Um, so if we carry on round, um, oh yes, no, the other thing you can see here, it's got skylights. Um, a lot of light is a good idea in a workshop, and I've got lots of fluorescent lights for when it's not, uh, the, the sky is not light bright enough. Um, so I've got a, a, a milling machine and a, a lathe, um, the lathe is a lovely thing. I never could understand the point of lathes until I got one, but now, now I can see that it's a good idea. Um, and down there, there's a, the, the little green box at the floor is my MIG welder. And that's really one of, almost my favorite tool because um, it, well, I think there's this macho idea about welding that you have to dress up all in the gear and it's sort of something butch and macho. But I think really one should think of them like uh, glue guns for metal. And you could do really delicate little things. You don't really have to dress up. And although it's not supposed to be a good idea, very often when I'm tacking things, I don't put on a helmet. I just close my eyes and pull the trigger. Um, and the perfect accompaniment for a MIG welder, which you can't really see, is that in that pillar is actually hung a lot of different angle grinders with different sorts of discs on. So basically, I make my machines by welding bits on and grinding bits off if they're not quite right. So. Uh, and I think that really completes the tour. That's the other door, and then we're back to where we started. So I thought I would end my seven minutes by showing you two of my favorite tools. This is one of them. This is a pair of uh, vice grips, mole grips. Um, but the great thing about these is you can adjust them single-handedly. So uh, when if, if I'm mending something I've made in London, this is the one tool that I'll take with me apart from um, a leather man. And uh, so, yeah, you can, you can hold on to nuts and bolts. I can use it when I'm welding things. You can clamp things to railings or part, handy things to make a sort of temporary vice to saw things. So, uh, it's made by a company called Facom. Um, yeah, my other favorite tool is an angle grinder, but with a very, very thin disc. So, uh, it's so thin, it's, it's actually flexible. So, I think I've seen ones in the hardware stores here that are 0.045 of an inch thick. This is about 0.03. Uh, and so obviously when you cut through things with this, you're removing less metal. So there's less dust, less sparks, um, and it goes quicker. So this is the perfect way to get rid of all the welds that you don't want, because there are always welds that you don't want. So I'm just going to end by demonstrating this. Um, so uh, I just bought a, a padlock at a hardware store, and I know they're doing a lock picking thing down on the floor today. Well, um, this is even quicker. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just, uh, normally I would be able to hold the uh, padlock in my hand, but American angle grinders uh, seem to have the switch right at the back, so they really have to be used uh, two handed. Um, okay. <clears throat> Oh, actually, this one's quite stiff. We'll have to go through the other half as well. <coughs> so, <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> 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 <coughs>